today on Be Something Wonderful. Go all in to manifest and shift to your desired reality and identity now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back and good morning here from the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Tomorrow, we have our second live stream of the year. Very powerful. Tomorrow, Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time, we're going to come to you live right here from the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas to answer your questions and, talk and, and discuss and unpack topics that you've been sending to us at info at besomethingwonderful.com. This will be broadcast on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. If you're a member, tune in. If you're not, check out the link below. Creatives, I want to talk about this an amazing session I had yesterday. This is with a very powerful creator. She's been on the channel for a while. She is very well read in all of the uh, teachings all of the spiritual greats, right? Dr. Joe Dispenza, Neville Goddard, Abraham Hicks. She's talk, she talks about them all. But what's really powerful is she said, Tom, we've been, we've been talking many times now in, in sessions. And, and in this particular session, she goes, you know, Tom, I'm going all in. Now, what is she talking about here? She's, remember, she studied the law. She's been applying the law, the law of assumption, the law of being. But now she's going to go all in and, and she's declaring that I am the law, that I am reality. It's what we always talk about it, but with the way she said it, it just it gave me a tingle. <laughs> we leveled up together. I love the way she said it. We're going to unpack some of these ideas today and more. In other words, what she's saying, I'm no longer dealing with 3D conditions. I'm no longer tolerating unwanted circumstances. I'm no longer waiting for out there to change. I'm no longer trying to flip my thoughts or resolve my feelings or get closure on my past or wait for fulfillment or try to be patient or persist until something happens. She's done with it. She didn't say these things, but that's what she, this is the idea, right? She's leaving all that behind right? You're never dealing with anything. Rather, you are dealing within the awareness of being. I am. Move from simply understanding and applying the law to being the law. That's what she's really saying. This is all implied. She's leaving all of this behind, right? She's leaving behind simply understanding and applying the law, try to make something happen, or, or even just manifesting this, but not that. Right, this whole idea of it working sometimes and not working. She is embodying the law. She is declaring herself that she's the law or, the, or I am or that state of being, that one and only source of her reality. Very powerful. Go all in as your I am awareness, the one and only source of your reality. It's not a journey to fulfillment. I really want you to hear this. It's a journey of unfolding of fulfillment. It's the unfold, it's not a journey to fulfillment, it's, it's fulfillment unfolding, right? It's an eternal journey. It never ends. Today, here and now, right now, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> and you're not, you're not going anywhere, right? It's the state of Moses, right? Remember, the state of Moses represents your, your devotion to the Lord or the law as you manifest and create a better life. But she's now moving from the state of Moses, right? Because that's what the state of Moses represents. This idea that I'm applying the law, that I'm learning the law, that I'm understanding the law, that I'm manifesting things in my life from the law or due to the law, right? But she's moving from that. Instead of merely trying to create a better life, she's saying this, she's saying, I am the life. Wow, I am the way, I am the light, I am the resurrection, right? So the state of Moses represents your devotion to the Lord or the law, right? As you manifest and create a better life. And, but the state of Joshua, which she's now declaring, I am, the state of Joshua is your I am awareness, is your absolute embodiment as source in I am awareness itself. 
So it's, you're moving from I'm creating and manifesting a better life that I am the life. I am the resurrection, rising, leaving the state, dying to the state of Moses and rising or resurrecting to the state of Joshua, right? I am the life. Move from your growing understanding of the law to embodying it. Right? Mo for, to, to embody it, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Joshua 1, 2 is what God said to Joshua. Moses, my servant is dead. You served the law. You applied the law. Right? You, you studied the law. You know the law. Now you're the operant power, but you're more than the operant power of the law. You are the law. So we're even going be beyond that. You're beyond the operant power. You are the law. You are the reality. You are the light. Wow. So, the, from the chosen, this is a different scene, and I have linked this scene to the video. This is not the scene of the Pool of Bethesda, which you know I love. This is the scene where Jesus declares, I am the law of Moses. Very powerful. I recommend that you watch that entire scene if you haven't. It's, it's genius. It's beautiful. From, but from the chosen... Right? This is, remember, this scene from The Chosen is, of course, based on Scripture. In Luke 4.21, Scripture says this, The fulfillment of this Scripture, as you have heard it today, as you have heard it, is today. This is Jesus, right, in The Chosen, based on Luke 4.21. It's not exact. It's based on it, right? The fulfillment of this Scripture, of the law, the law of Moses, as you have heard it, is today. Here and now. Do you get it? I am is always here and now. The poor, the brokenhearted, the captive, and the blind are offered redemption here and now. In other words, they're saved. They're offered to be saved. Right? Redeeming yourself from, the, from what you believe are unwanted conditions or, or a limited, a limited, weak 3D personality, a, a, a limited, doubtful, fearful 3D personality. You're saved from that. Your redemption's now. The poor, poor in spirit, right? Meaning, understand that the poor in spirit, what, what Jesus was getting at, is that you're, as long as you're in the 3D experience, right, that 3D personality will always be poor in spirit. Right? Because there's a greater spirit within you. That's your I am awareness. You are spirit having a 3D experience. So acknowledge that, that you're poor in spirit while you're focused in 3D. But you have the unlimited power of that source that you are operating through you and as you. That's why Neville Goddard says you're the operant power. So your true identity is I am. Right? But so you no longer have to feel captive or brokenhearted or poor or blind to, the, to your true seeing of who you really are, right? The mind's eye, the spiritual seeing. You're offered redemption here and now. Your own I am awareness, your imagination, as Neville Goddard calls it, saves you and redeems you here and now, right? Saved from unwanted and undesired realities, past, present, and future saves from believing that you're limited, that, that, there are, that there are things that are impossible to you, that, that you have to work and try and struggle to, to, to live the life that you want, to manifest it, the things that you want, that you're letting all that go. You're dying to that. The Lord or the law does not exist to punish you or exact vengeance, but to fulfill your desires to fulfill your dreams. It's not there to punish you when you're not thinking or feeling what you believe is a positive or right or righteous thought. It's not there to do that. You're totally forgiven. You're saved by your own I am awareness, right? That's why it says that Jesus in that scene in The Chosen, he said the day of vengeance is in the future. Because, right? Jesus is not there to, because they were asking, why didn't you read about an Isaiah where they talk about God in the day of vengeance? And he said, the day of vengeance is in the future, meaning it doesn't exist because there is no future. It's not a reality. There is no vengeance. This is where Jesus goes on in the scene from the chosen. I'm not here for vengeance. I'm here for salvation. That, that, that law is not there to punish you. For, for what you believe not thinking the right thoughts or not feeling the right feelings. It's there to save you, 
to know that you're beyond those thoughts and feelings or any 3D condition, outer or inner. That you're the, you're the savior, you're the awareness within which it all takes place. There's no vengeance going on here. That's powerful, right? This is in that scene that I've linked. And then in Matthew 5, 17, Jesus says this, do not think that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Not to, de not to destroy the law, not, not to punish you. In other words, to allow God, the law of the Lord, to work through you as you. You are one with the Father, right? But the Father is greater than I am. So it's not to destroy that idea that, that, there's, that, there's, that God, that isness of reality exists and is absolute. It's to say that you're one with it. Yes, it's still greater than you, greater than any focus that you can have in the 3D uh, experience, right? I have come, I come, or I am come, or I have come, that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly because I am the life. I am awareness is the life. And then in the chosen during that scene, they're, they're, as Jesus is declaring that he's the prophet, the Messiah, well, he's surrounded by family and friends. He's in his hometown. This is you as your 3D personality still not believing it, right? You'll never convince or have any proof for your 3D personality or that lower mind or those conditions that you look out with or the people that you knew from your childhood or your family, that, that you are that awareness, that you are the one and only source of your reality. That's why Jesus quoted, physician, heal yourself, right? In other words, well, show us, give us proof. Heal yourself, show us that, show us miracles. That's your 3D personality saying that, but remember that your 3D personality, you'll never have any proof for that. You'll never be able to demonstrate it as, that, as your focus as that physical limited being. Right? It's that higher. Uh, the things we heard you did in Capernaum do here in your, in your hometown. This is what they were asking him. Right? Or Jesus was saying, that's what they wanted from him. Show us those miracles that you did all over the place. Right here in your hometown. Right? That's your 3D personality saying, show me. Give me proof. Give me something practical here that I know that I'm that I am awareness. There's nothing to prove it can't, it can't do it. That's why Jesus couldn't do miracles. That was the whole idea, that he couldn't show them miracles in his hometown. But what's the metaphysical meaning to that? And it's not that he couldn't do miracles, but he couldn't. <laughs> right? Not in his hometown, meaning, meaning you can't prove to that lower mind that's a different vibration. That's a, in other words, it's a different reality. It's, it's looking at limitations. It's looking at obstacles. It's looking at self-limited. It can never rise to that idea because that it's all, its focus is on the limitations. That's the only purpose of the 3D mind, that lower mind, is to consciously declare what you want, not to create it, right? Not to, right? It's there to declare it. Right to and then fo and then see it and experience it physically, but that's it. It's your I am awareness, who you really are, that creates it all. That was the whole purpose of that scene. The things we heard you do do here in your hometown, right? That was the whole thing. That's why Jesus couldn't do it in his hometown. Jesus says this. This brings up an important truth. No prophet is acceptable in his hometown. Wow. Do you see it? In other words, your 3D personality will never accept that you're a prophet, that you're the Messiah, that you're your own savior, that you're, that you're, that you're all spirit, having a physical experience, looking out to that physical mind. It will never accept that. In other words, no matter how much you study, how much you understand and apply the law, you'll never convince the 3D physical mind of your true identity as source, as I am awareness, as all that is. That's why this client, I loved it. She gave me tingles the way she talked about this. She said, I'm, I'm going all in. She's no longer dealing, trying to convince the physical mind of anything, right? She's going all in and she knows she'll never be able to do it. No matter how much she studies and applies the law, she'll never be able to convince that 3D mind. So she's going all in as awareness itself. I am the law, that's what she's declaring. And you don't need or have to, you don't have to convince the 3D mind of anything. 
It's here to, you're, remember, it's here, that, that it's there, your conscious mind, to consciously know yourself as source. That's what the 3D mind is there, to consciously declare things, announce things, decide what your desires are, <laughs> and then to experience it physically. That's all. You announce reality as reality, to experience the law as law, embody it. Right In the chosen, it, it says here, you may be the chosen seed of Abraham. This is what Jesus says to them. <clears throat> you may be the chosen seed of Abraham. You may be the people of the covenant, but that will not bring you my salvation. They really got shocked when he said that. Right? He's declaring himself the Messiah, but that's your I am awareness. Saying to your 3D personality, Right? That 3D, that lower mind that, okay, you may be the people of the covenant. You, you may be the seed of Abraham, right? But you, that will not bring you my salvation. In other words, until you know that you are much greater than any physical experience, any thought, feeling, or condition, you won't be saved from them. Wow. Woo, that was a tingle. That's big. Do you get this, guys? This is big. You may have studied and applied the law, or the Lord. Remember, the law, in capital letters, in the Old Testament, it calls it the Lord. It's the Lord or the law, God, right? That's the law of being. That's the law of assumption. That's that absolute reality. You may believe in that higher power, but until you embody it, till you believe as that power, as that law, you won't be saved from your life of limitations and doubts from your life of unwanted conditions, from your life of things feeling hot and cold, good and bad, right and wrong, a manifesting and I'm not manifesting, all of that, not until you declare, I am the life, I am the law, I am the resurrection as Jesus did, your I am awareness. Do you get the power here? It's, the, it's about the acceptance that you are spiritually poor. <clears throat> One of you had a question, I think it was on the Facebook group, of what I was talking about here, and I've talked about, I've talked about these, um, uh, these ideas in, in many videos, but remember, the acceptance that you're spiritually poor, you're spiritually poor as a 3D limited mind or personality in the physical experience, but you're blessed beyond measure, you're blessed beyond this, wor this world as your true identity, as I am awareness. That's what Jesus was saying. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Because you're spiritually poor as a 3D limited personality. It's the acceptance of that idea. That you're not trying to lift the 3D personality. You're not trying to fix it. You're not to, there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a focus. It's just an idea of, of limitation so you can know how absolutely limitless you are. That's what all that is. You're blessed beyond measure. Blessed are the poor in spirit that accept that they're spiritually poor as a 3D limited personality. And then you go all in on your true identity. Wow. It can't get any clearer than today, guys. The chosen. Then they go, as Jesus is, is, Jesus is doubling down here. <laughs> Watch this scene because it's powerful. It's doubling down. They're saying, well, who do you think you are? That's your 3D person. Who do you think you are? Right? We, 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 you're saying that to yourself. Who do you think you are to say, I am source and there is no other? That I am already that person I want to be. It almost feels fake. Right? We feel like we're faking it. We feel like a false prophet as they were accusing him. Right? That's the whole idea when we say, I, I, it feels fake to me. It feels like pretending. Because you feel like a false prophet. But you're not. You're the Messiah. You are that I am awareness. The 3D personality is in disbelief. It's beside itself, like they were. As you declare, I am that I am. I am who I assume and affirm and, and, and announce who I am. I, as, as I imagine, assume and affirm that you are that which you want to be. Right? As you go all in and take a stand like Joshua and I am awareness. Remember, it was said in Joshua, wherever Joshua puts his foot, it had been given him. Take a stand like Joshua, right? Rise from that, leave that old state of Moses behind. Die to the old you. That's why Paul said, I die daily, right? Are you claiming to be the Messiah? This is what they're asking him. Or are you merely claiming to speak for the Lord as a prophet? 
they, they give him a chance to, 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 uh, to back out here. But Jesus doubles down here, right? Are you claiming to be the Messiah? Absolutely he's claiming to be the Messiah. You're not merely claiming to speak for the Lord as a prophet. You're not merely claiming that you apply the law or study the law or try to manifest things through the law. You're saying, I am the law. I am the Savior. I, you are embodying it. In other words, are you applying and using the law, or are you embodying it as being the law? You are a false prophet. They accuse him of being a false prophet. Yeah, your 3D personality goes, you, it feels fake. You're a false. It, you're a faker. We're all fakers, right? You're faking it. Because who we really are is that spirit, is that I am awareness. So powerful today. And then Jesus says it. I am the law of Moses. That's when they brought him out to stone him, right? You're going all in. You're dying to the old you, right? But the, the, the 3D world wants to stone you with the facts and the doubts and the fears that you're not who you say you are. The, 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 you're, giving, you're, you're dying to the state of Moses where you merely study and apply the law or you consciously follow, you unconsciously follow the law right, depending on the law or the Lord to bring you out of the wilderness, like, like Moses, right, to bring Moses out. You're, you unconsciously follow it, and you, and you just go, okay, well, that's what I created, or that's what's going on, that's fate, that must be what the Lord or the law wants, right? What do you, now, but now, instead, you're rising to the state of Joshua, that there is no fate, that you decide your fate, that you decide it all, that Jesus, now you're announcing, I am the law, I am the life, I am the resurrection, I am the one and only source and creator of my own reality, no matter what. Go all in and manifest and shift to your desired life and reality right now. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for being part of our Facebook group, the Be Something Wonderful Ambassadors at facebook.com slash groups slash Be Something Wonderful for joining us on Instagram and Twitter at Tom Caring. We also have a, at Tom Karen, we also have an organization page on Facebook at Be Something Wonderful. You can find us on any social media at either Tom Karen or at Be Something Wonderful. And tomorrow, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Pacific Coast Standard Time, we're going to have our second live event of the year where we talk about topics that you've been sending us, questions that you have, live, right here. I'm going to be answering those questions and talking about these points right here from the studios of Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas on the Be Something Wonderful membership channel. If you're a member, tune in. If you're going to miss it, don't worry. It will be available to view on the channel later. And if you're not a member, check it out. There's a link below. Creators, with great love, with great light, and infinite gratitude. This is Tom Karen in the studios here at Be Something Wonderful in Las Vegas. Until next time, until tomorrow morning, see you soon.